Okay, let's call this meeting to order. Roll call, Vicki, please. Commissioner Madrid? Here. Commissioner Lovett? Here. Commissioner Elliott? Here. Joyce Gates? Here. Gilbert Salguero? Here. Lisa Spear? Here. Tom Martin said he would not be able to attend. Um, Commissioner Paula? Here. And Jamal Williams? Here. No quorum. Okay. Approval of the minutes of February the 22nd, 2021. Everybody had a chance to read all the minutes? I entertain a motion. So make a motion we approve. Have a second? I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second on the floor. All those in favor? Say aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign? Okay, thank you. Introduction of Parks and Recreation Director, Russell Hooper, Justin Howald. Good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. It's my pleasure this evening to introduce to you our new Parks and Recreation Director, uh, Mr. Russell Hooper. Mr. Hooper comes to us from the city of Dallas, uh, where he spent 13 years in their Parks and Recreation Department. Uh, he started as an irrigation technician and worked his way all the way up to being a manager. Um, in fact, his last management position was at White Rock, Park, which is actually one of the largest parks in the city of Dallas. And so uh, we're very honored to have him come work for the city of Clovis. Um, I'm looking forward to the wonderful things he has in store for our parks. He's actually already had the opportunity to drive through most of them, or actually all of them, and just has started to brainstorm already. And so it's, it's wonderful to, to hear his thoughts and his input and his experience and background and to see where he's going to lead our parks department in, in the next years to come and several years to come. And so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Russell to allow him to introduce himself a little bit and uh, ad advise anything that he would like to. So, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Thank you, Justin. Um, again, my name is Russell Hooper. I've uh, been here Day five, day six, now we're on a roll. I've, uh, this is my second big meeting we've attended. Uh, been just basically uh, learning everything. It's, it's been a learning experience for the first week. How did we do things? How's things situated? The policies. Drove around with Justin. I've drove around with some of the other guys. I've met my, my people at the, in the various departments. And I'm just learning, and then I'll start learning personalities of the people, personalities of the parks, personalities of the city. Things along those lines to where we can just get some things going. Uh, Got a few projects that have, that have popped up real quick and start tackling them. I mean, that's about all we can do at this point. So I'm really looking forward to it and the opportunity to be here. Okay. Welcome, Mr. Hooper. I was going to say, let's introduce ourselves. Let's start with Mr. Baca down there. Morning, Baca, Director for the Columbus Municipal School District. Uh, Joyce. Joyce Gates. Um, board member. You guys might need to talk into the microphone. Okay, I always forget. Uh, Joyce Gates. Uh, I'm a board member, and I represent the county. My name is Jamal Williams. I represent District 2. My name is Gilbert Salguero. Uh, Megan Paula, Commissioner, District 4. Gary Elliott, Commissioner, District 2. Fidel Madrid, District 3, Chairman of the Board. Leo Lovett, and District uh, Commissioner for District 1. Lisa Pellegrino Spear, I'm the Executive Director for Clovis Main Street and Board Member for Parks and Recreation, Beautification. Justin Hallwalt, City Manager. <laughs> Claire Burrows, Assistant City Manager. And Russell Hooper, Park and Rec Director. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mike Morris, I'm Mayor. <laughs> Kevin Wilson, Eastern New Mexico News. Scott Schumann, just a citizen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I could say just for a moment, anybody in that uniform is not just a citizen, so thank you for your service. Commissioner. Marty Crystal. Vicki Reyes, Assistant City Clerk. Vincent Romero, Zoo Director. Okay, thank you. And then we have Marty back there. Marty Trussell, President of Eastern New Mexico, Ladies Management, 
<laughs> okay, thank you, everybody. Next, we have discussion regarding Parks Master Plan. Clara Burroughs. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. <coughs> Chairman, members of the Parks and Recreation Committee. In front of you, um, back in 2015, as you all know, we completed a Parks Master Plan. It's located on the city's website. Um, if, uh, if any of you like to refresh your memories, several of you have had hard copies of that document. Since that time, we've been working diligently to complete the priorities that were listed <clears throat> in the back of that document, which were very comprehensive. In front of you this evening, um, and this is for your information too, that's why we're doing it the, this evening, Mr. Hooper, are the, the current reprioritized rec recommendations um, from Mark Dayhoff before he left. So I just wanted to share those with you this evening. Um, these are the, the objectives that the city has with regard to our, our prioritizations for uh, improving park improvements for the, for the you know, coming future. There's the short term, um, medium term and long term goals. I didn't know if anybody had uh, any questions regarding those or if there were any um, additions that we wanted to make or just what your thoughts were. Thank you. So, I was looking at the, I was driving down Grand the other day and Roy Walker, that fence that's around Roy Walker, can we fix that fence, like put that black one up like we did around the Hillcrest? Because that fence looks pretty bad. The chaining fence. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And yeah, it's absolutely something we get a price to do. Um, the the fence that fronts US 6084. Um, I know that I'm speaking with the, the Department of Transportation Secretary tomorrow, yeah. and going to try to find out more schedule when they're planning to go in there and do that road work. Um, and we may on that side wait. Um, until they're finished with the road construction. That way we don't put up a brand new fence and take the risk of it getting damaged. Um, but it's definitely something that we can, can take a look at and try to schedule um, okay. as far as... Just as long as we have it on... on, on yeah. radar. We, we'll put it on the radar, absolutely. On, the, on radar. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Okay, thank you. Anything else? Any yes. other questions? <laughs> yeah, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Um, Celine, could you put up the PowerPoint, please, on the Pappy Museum? One of the things that is not on this, uh, on, the, on the recommendations, but that we have been talking about, Ms. Gates, uh, you've been discussing it with this board now for three years or so, I'm guessing, um, and, and Commissioner uh, Madrid, um, Mr. Hooper, and, um, and just, just run through the pictures, if you would, Celine, please and Kelsey Knight, who's our marketing communications and grants person for the, for the city of Clovis, went and toured that area on Friday so that Mr. Hooper could have a look and see um, <clears throat> what the situation is there. This has, of course, out at Ned Houck. We have an indoor area there um, of various historical artifacts, <clears throat> then, and then an outside area too. Uh, these um, these pieces have been donated to the city over a period of many years, and um, and as you can see, it's, it has fallen into into disrepair. Um, Miss Gates, I'm sure you'd like to share uh, your stories of of the <clears throat> the area when you used to be a teacher and with the with the children. But so what we're wanting to do is, you know, and I have been doing with staff is trying to find um, federal funding or just general funding for, you know, farm and ranch um, improvements. We talked with the parks guys out there at Ned Hook Park um, about the building area there that, you know, half of that building is, is where they keep their equipment. And then the other half, of course, is the, is the museum. But this, the last time I want to say that anybody had been in there or signed the book was probably about it was a while ago. It was it was at, at least last year, um, and of course the, it's not open to the public. Um, you can go there if you if you you know call somebody maybe the historical association. There's no formal organisation for all of this. So just like to start the conversation and it finishes there, Celine. I'd just like to start a conversation about um, <clears throat> you know what what the group would like to see the uh, staff uh, do with this uh, facility. Um, of course, you've got some really nice cars. I mean, very old 
cars that are in great disrepair and you know you've got Alice Chalmer tractors and very old John Deere tractors and Massey Ferguson tractors you've you have um, all kinds of threshing machinery. You have old, old combine harvesters. Um, lots of different things out there, which are really very his you know, significant historically from an agricultural uh, point of view. So you know, we'd like to uh, get some direction from you as <clears throat> how you'd like us to proceed um, um, with this project too. And, and then also, of course, add it to the, the list of recommendations, probably long term. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Claire. Joyce, would you like to go ahead and get the microphone and okay. tell us what you think? Well, it's special to me, mainly because I taught second grade for many years, and that was one of the things I always took my class to, was out there to the museum. And uh, I would, it would, I would, my lessons would go along with what we were going to be seeing, the old house, the dugout, the half dugout and a lot of the machinery I could tie in with my classes, with my lessons. And uh, I retired in 99 and I did not realize it was, uh, I mean, at the time I was still taking my children out there, the old house still had glass in it, the porch was still on it, and I didn't go out there for a few years. So I didn't realize how bad it was until I went out and took my, my grandchildren out there. And uh, I just, it bothers me that we've let it deteriorate because there's a lot of history out there and we should say, we should, we should take care of our history is my opinion. And that's why I asked to be on this board, was hoping that something could be done. And Claire's really been, they've really been working trying to find some grant money to do something. And the old house is really bad and I would love to see it fixed if it's possible. That's all okay. I have to say. Thank you, Joyce. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I spoke with Wilma Fulgham about this at lunchtime today. Um, Wilma, as you know, uh, served on the Ned Hook Park Board for many, many years. Um, and I also checked with Leanne Melanson to see if there were any agreements that the city of Clovis had with any historic groups to look after the facility or maintain it. And it doesn't seem to be that we have any agreements in place for, for anything. So whatever you decide to do, we'll, uh, we can start from there. Okay. How about you, Leo? Anything? One of your relatives lived out there pretty close to the... Well, they did. They did. And, you know, to be honest, this is the first time I realized we have had that museum. So, uh, in my opinion, I, I hope that we can find the funds. Um, it's going to take probably uh, numerous years to get it, get it all together. I don't think we can go in and do it all at once, but I, I certainly hope we can get this uh, uh, get it done for you, so we can you can take your grandkids back out there and, and let them see a fixed up uh, museum. So, Claire, oh, oh sorry. sorry. I was going to say, Mr. Chairman and members of the board, I'm sorry. Uh, some of the internal discussions that we've been having is is from a directional standpoint. Is you know. There's a lot of equipment. There is a, a lot of things within the warehouse itself, which is actually our maintenance facility for Ned Halk Park. And so, you know, if we're trying to theoretically move all of those pieces of equipment indoors and try to create some type of farm and ranch museum, that's going to be a very large structure. And so when we start looking at costs that are associated with this project, to trying to determine what those costs may be, you know, which pieces of equipment do we want to try and bring indoors? Which ones do we want to leave outdoors? You know, what is worth salvaging? What may not be worth salvaging at this point? And so trying to make those determinations so that, that we know from a staff standpoint what direction we need to head, what type of guidance do we want to try and construct and build out there to try and save and create uh, a farm and ranch type of museum. So. Well, Mr. Hooper brought up an idea of putting cement under those tractors so they wouldn't be sinking in. So and and at the same time, a, yeah, but still from a rust standpoint, it's already started to deteriorate from the elements. And so do we want to try and bring those indoors? Or do we want to put some type of just shelter over the top of them? Um, you know, different ideas. And like I said, trying, us just trying to get some general direction on where we want to head with the facility itself. Okay. And then it, it may be, and I don't know if there is such a thing, but some... Uh, uh, historian in um, farming 
implements artifacts to, to let us know, you know which ones are important to preserve because there are so very many. Um, and and you know what we might be able to do to to help facilitate that too. I think that that would be helpful because I don't know that. You know, I've been talking with my father in England, who of course is a retired farmer, and tells me what all these different pieces of machinery are and what they're used for. But I you know, but from a what the value is and and the need to preserve as you know how many of them are there in the country. I that I do not know. But then there it's it's obvious that there are some significant pieces out there that are falling into disrepair. Two thoughts. Uh, the building that, uh, and Joyce, maybe you can answer this, that is the, I, I'm assuming the homestead where you said the windows are out, or is that building secure or are the windows just The windows the gone? Is, the house is falling down, actually. Mm -hmm. And I, and like I said, yeah. 21, 22 years ago, it was not that bad. Mm -hmm. And I just, nothing's been done to it. Yeah. The porch has fallen off. I'm not sure. I'm not enough. I don't know enough about building to know if it's if it's repairable. And um, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the Parks Board, uh, Commissioner Parler, um, it is secured. The whole area is fenced oh, off and yes. and not open to the public. I mean, yes, it is in severe disrepair, and you would not want to try and go in it. Could you? And the second thought: that some of the equipment that may be more valuable than others or more historic, can we move it maybe into town into? buildings or garages that the city owns to preserve things that way rather than building a structure i don't know where that would be <laughs> thank you mr chairman members of the board mr Paula. we don't have just extra storage space yeah around town um certainly <clears throat> if we could move some buildings into preserve them in the meantime that's something that we could take a look at but we don't have that much extra storage space available to us um we have checked with the um, historic preservation office on the the homestead site um, and it was actually moved from th that's not its original location so it was actually moved oh, okay. into that particular site um, and it's not from an historic building standpoint we could go in there and so uh, some of our discussions today is just finding out once again what is the cost to just come in and try and to um, restore it to its historic look in nature and, and still try to maintain that, that historic feel to it so um, when people do come out and tour, um, they, they could have a sense of what it was like um, during that time period. And then, and the other thing, of course, and it's interesting, of course, to hear like Commissioner, what Commissioner Lovett just said, he wasn't aware that this place was there. Um, and I'm sure that there are several people in the room that may feel the same way this evening and those watching out there in TV land. and. So the question is, is it in the right location? Mm -hmm. Should it be moved into town to you know, Hillcrest Park or something like that? To, you know, if you are gonna build a big museum type thing and is it easily accessible for the children? I mean, if they are visiting from school with the time it takes to get out to Ned Hogg and so on. I mean, these are things that we need to consider as part of our d deliberative process. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Anything else? Yeah, Mr. Chairman. I think it would be a good idea for the commissioners, the new commissioners, and, and uh, our park director to take a little trip out there, maybe next uh, uh, you know, Parks and Rec meeting, and let everybody kind of look at that and get an idea. You know, the last time we were there and we walked around the, the area, the old house is really not sound enough that you can even get in it, you know, and the foundation is gone and everything. I don't know that it would ever be able to be resurrected, I really don't, but... Uh, there's a lot of the old equipment. I don't think you'd have to worry about putting it inside or anything like that. I mean, all that equipment's been outside for 50 or 75 or 80 years probably. But maybe put some some kind of gravel or something down to put it on. Concrete's going to be too expensive. And uh, move it around and put it on that, and that way it wouldn't sink in. But I think everybody needs to have a trip out there and kind of see what to do. Because there's a lot of neat stuff. Uh, and a lot of really... Uh, stuff that dates back a hundred years probably yeah. maybe even more but uh, that would probably be a good idea to, to do that mm -hmm. and everybody could you know Megan and Leo and all and uh, uh, all of us could uh, take another look at it so yeah that's true there's a lot of stuff inside that building that's really nice a lot of history Lisa chairman thank you um and like Commissioner Elliott said that was uh, a great idea to take us all out there we did that 
I think, was it last year? Yeah. And which I know we have a, a lot of new board members since then. And, and like Leo, that was the first time I knew it was even there too. Um, I think, you know, I, I don't know what the challenges would be or if it would be even in the interest of the city, but the county has, you know, the little old house out there. Is there any way that maybe, you know, questioning the county if they would like to partner on something near the fairgrounds or you know one of those buildings or we do have you know random locations like um even next to our pioneer woman we have um, downtown maybe a little spot in there in that little parklet space where we could put some pieces that could stay outside and put little plaques on them that say what they are and maybe have more pieces throughout our community that kind of tell the history if it if it doesn't all fit in one location uh, Mr. Chairman, um, members of the Park Board, uh, um, Ms. Ms. Spear, we can, you know, we'd be happy to do that if, uh, if you like. And we can um, facilitate uh, Commissioner Elliott the, the meeting to be uh, out there <clears throat> next month if you'd like to, so that everyone can have a look. We can talk about it more, or maybe have a study session um, discussion as part of that meeting. Sure. Okay. How about you, Mr. Hooper? Any ideas? <laughs> yeah, but... <laughs> <laughs> No, and like I said, I think right now we're we're still in y'all y'all need to point us in a direction. Uh, we can accomplish that direction. It's just a matter of what we decide. Like I say, the, the random pieces around the city that you can place and uh, you know highlight certain things like we've done. Uh, pick which pieces. There's all sorts of things we can yeah. do. It's just a matter of which direction y'all want us to head. Really is. Mr. Chairman, I can so at this point, no one's been contacted that I'm, what I'm hearing as far as maybe valuing the equipment, as far as which ones to keep, which has more significance. Mm -hmm. Do we have a direction of possibly who to contact? Um, I've got a couple of people I don't mind. I, I'm not going to say their names publicly because I don't want to put them on the spot, but would you like me to con start some contacts to, to see if we can't find the right person to come out and look at them? Yes, that would be that would be great. Thank you. Okay, I'll do that. That'd be great. And so, um, Mr. Mr. Chairman, um, with regard to these master plan recommendations, I'll go ahead, if that's okay, then with you, and add the Pappy Museum to as a long-term plan, so that we can okay. revise this. And then, if anybody has, I think Vicky um, sent this out this afternoon to the groups. If anybody has any comments or thoughts they'd like to share with us, please uh, feel free to reach out and. And, um, and maybe we can, we'll talk about this in another, if we don't do it next month, we can, we'll do it in, uh, in June okay. and, um, and, or May and, and chat about it some more. Good. Sounds good. Thank, Thank you, Claire. You. Any other questions? Okay. Discussion. Athletic organizations reopening. Claire Burroughs. Oh. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> 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 Still, uh, uh, and Mr. Chairman, members of the Parks Recreation Board, the last uh, month or so, of course, like as has been the previous year, quite interesting with dealing with the COVID and uh, the closure of parks and recreation and athletic activities around the community. We have been working since we went um, yellow and now more significantly green with the various athletic organisations here in town, um, particularly Guy Leader. Um, and then uh, the the volleyball folk and and so on to uh, to get them open again. So just to let you know, what, you know, the city of is. I just like to let the public know too, and any of those of you that are involved in athletic organisations, this is not the city of Clovis's decision with to what your loading capacity can be at uh, at your facility. I and mean, you need to work through the through the state, and we've been um, helping with that, working with uh, state police captain O'Leary. Um, who's been very helpful in giving us some direction to interpret the various regulations that are coming down from public health orders. So, but just to let you know that you know Guy Leader is is back up and and playing some tournaments and and so are various other sports organisations. I don't know if Mr. Holbert wanted to talk about Roy Walker. So we are uh, reopening Roy Walker as well. Um, we have put out some guidance uh, regarding the capacities that we are allowing into the gym itself um, and into the weight room area. And so uh, Roy Walker is open back up, and uh, we just, I know that our, our uh, individuals that, that work there would certainly love to see people in their facility. Um, 
during this time. Uh, they've taken the opportunity to put a whole new fresh interior paint job on the facility. They've redone the floors. Uh, the um, lobby area has all been freshly repainted. Um, and I know right now, um, I want to say the tax aid, AARP, is uh, conducting some tax services uh, still out of the facility there. So um, if you use Roy Walker, please get in touch with them, and uh, we're happy to have you back. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Justin. Thank you, Claire. Mr. Baca, you want to tell us something about the schools? What's going on with the athletic deals at the school? You bet. So uh, <coughs> basketball gets started uh, this week with our first home game uh, Thursday night. Uh, it'll be a girls, girls game against Goddard. The boys will be on the road. So basketball is going. Swimming will start. I apologize just real quick. I, I even have trouble hearing if you can use the microphone. Oh, sorry. Thank you. No problem. So basketball is a... Uh, got started uh, practicing last week. They'll have their first games this week. Uh, so that's going to be going. That's about going to be about a five to six week season. Uh, swim will start uh, this week as well. Uh, they're practicing and so swim meets will begin uh, hopefully next week sometime. Uh, football will end this Saturday. We're going to be playing Roswell uh, High School uh, in a fifth week game. Uh, the original plan had been to have a bowl game situation. Uh, but because of uh, a lot of circumstances, that did not work out. So we got matched up with uh, Roswell High uh, for a 2 o'clock p.m. Saturday game uh, here in Clovis. We haven't played Roswell in quite some time, so it's going to be quite a, quite a, quite a game, I think. Um, volleyball, our girls' volleyball team qualified for the state volleyball tournament, uh, first time since 2014. Uh, so they'll be traveling to Santa Fe tomorrow. Uh, to play in the first round of, of that tournament, so we're really proud of our volleyball team. Soccer uh, is finishing up uh, within the next couple of weeks. They'll have their state tournament uh, next week, and both our boys' team and girls' teams uh, are in the, in the hunt for a possible uh, state tournament uh, uh, opportunity. And then all of our spring sports, golf, tennis, uh, track and field, baseball, softball, uh, they start next week as well. So... Everything is on top of each other. It's been quite a challenge to try to get everything together and, and to stay, again, like Claire mentioned, uh, under the guidelines and, you know, having to, to, to suffer with that as well. Uh, but we're making it work, and, and, again, it's all for kids, and we're just happy to see our, our, our young people uh, out there competing and representing Clovis uh, in athletic programs, uh, including middle school and including our freshman academy as well. So it's been pretty thank successful. You. Thank you, Mr. Baca. Yeah, thank you. You have anything to add? No. No. <laughs> Mr. Chairman? Yes. Um, just, just a quick statement on Roy Walker. I talked to the guys out there, about four, and they'd already had over 60 people there today. Just, reg just the recreation, not counting the tax aid. So people are ready to come back. And, Thank you. And then with regard to recreating for the, senior, for the seniors in the community and the senior services, the friendship um, outdoor activities, will be commencing on April the 1st. So that's uh, uh, later on, or well, Thursday of this week. So they're very excited to have the first step to be able to come back together. I think they're talking about um, sort of exercises um, by the pergola and afternoon tea outside and uh, um, drive through bingo, that kind of thing. So as well as the online programs that they have been doing all this time. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? Mr. Chairman. I'd like to say that Guy Leader was very successful this weekend. It was their first tournament, and um, they had well over 40 teams there. And I think one-fourth of them were from out of town. They came over here. We haven't had no softball in over 16 months there in that area. And I'll tell you what, I love softball. And everywhere I went, people always said, when can we come to Clovis? When is Clovis opening up? I said, as soon as we can. And we very, responded very well. The people were out there. And they wore their masks. They did everything that we asked of them. There was no problem. You know, it, was, it went really well. But softball was a very plus this weekend. Thank you, Gilbert. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to thank, you know, um, State Captain O'Leary. He's been wonderful throughout the whole COVID experience that we've been through and, and particularly helpful in trying to help facilitate opening up the recreational facilities and giving us guidance um, in that area. And Mr. Jackson and I have worked very closely for the last few weeks on, on making that happen too. And, and he's been very helpful as well. And and understood fully what was, was needed and met, you know, assured us that he would make sure that it happened. So that's good to hear, Gilbert. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? How about you, Jamal? Yes, sir. Um, I was just going to announce um, the baseball. Um, we are 
like I said, we're just going to green, so we're starting to commence um, our guidelines so we can so that we can open up under the COVID safe guidelines. So um, possibly a late spring to summer uh, youth baseball league. Okay. We're, we're in the works right now. Okay. Thank you, Jamal. Mr. Chairman, can I also share uh, some news for the future? Uh, we were going to start this year, but because of COVID, of course, it got changed. But we will uh, have in Clovis a high school wrestling program next year. Uh, we are going to be putting that as part of our sports programs. Uh, we are the only 5A school in the state of New Mexico uh, not to have wrestling as a sport uh, in our schools. And so we're real excited. Uh, our, I, we did a survey. We found out a lot of, a lot of kids are interested in that. So uh, we're going to be offering that as a sport for both boys and girls. There'll be a, a boys uh, state tournament as well as a girls state tournament in wrestling. And so um, something new coming to Clovis High School wrestling program. Thank you, Mr. Marco. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Anything else? <laughs> okay. I guess we'll go up to update regarding zoo projects. Vince Romero. <laughs> We've uh, started uh, replacing one of our retaining walls in some of our older exhibits. It's about uh, roughly around 350 feet of a cinder block wall. It, like I said, it was an old uh, railroad tie wall and uh, needed to be replaced. We also are, um, got the bid to work on a couple of our front pit exhibit areas. We're doing those a little at a time so we can shift animals around once we get those exhibits uh, completed. And that will probably start in about a week, week or so. Um, we're also gonna get bids on our bird aviaries and get those uh, worked on. There's, there's some older ones that need, need some attention. And uh, that's what we're working on right now. We also uh, just acquired a, uh, a llama and her baby. I don't know if they have it up. Uh, up yes, yeah, Celine, could you put that on the screen so everyone could see the new llama, please? Is that a llama and her mama? Llama and her mama. <laughs> the llama. The llama. The dad you had a lot of people go to the zoo. No. Excuse me, sir? Do you have a lot of people attending the zoo? We have been since spring break. It, it's really um, picked up. You know, we've, we've watched our numbers. <laughs> we've been safe doing that, and it, it's really picking up. And we also have um, a mental health group that comes out and walks every, every week, which is nice to have them out there. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Any questions for Vince? I have one suggestion, and it's a little bit out there, but Vince, there's a big children's book series about the baby llama and mama llama, and I read them to my daughter all the time, but I, it would be really fun to have, like, maybe a library reading or something out there and, like, do something or maybe partner with the library to do something to kind of show off the new llama and her mama. Yeah, and the baby we, llama. Maybe so we, we could meet. There's a whole series of books. It's really cute. To so. check that out. Yeah, that's a neat idea. We volunteering <laughs> Thank you. you, Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's a it would be yeah. a great you know marketing opportunity to get some more drive and some more people out to the out to the zoo too to see the new llamas. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. And maybe, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the Parks Board, it might be nice to go out there to have a tour as a group too um, to discuss recommendations and and so on for the zoo with Mr. Romero and his team. Good idea. Anything else? Nope. Okay, for the good of the order. Anything for the good of the order? Um, oh, yeah, I update. Marty back there. Yeah, we have an update on projects, Mr. Chairman, starting for the good of the order. I have a <laughs> thank okay. you. Go okay. ahead, Claire. I'm I'm Kelsey now. So um, uh, Kelsey uh, has been working with me on a um, UPS tree planting grant fund um, out at Green Acres. Um, we've uh, um, identified various different types of trees that are indigenous to this area, and so. Uh, that grant has been submitted now, so we're just going to wait. I think it's for $5,000, so we're just waiting now to see if it's successful. The commission approved applying for it, um, I think, at their last uh, commission meeting, so we're moving forward with that. Thank you. Okay. Next we have... 
yep. grant funding for UPS. But anyway, we already went through that. Arbor Day activities, 11 a.m., Friday, April the 30th, 2021, Green Acres. Claire Burroughs. <laughs> yes, thank, thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the Parks Board. The um, yeah, Arbor Day is, is scheduled. I've been working with Shane Cole and staff to, uh, to facilitate that. Um, Mr. Hooper and I have been discussing how we can improve and increase uh, that program. I know Vicky worked with the... Um, the Realtors Association, and they are giving us $500 to help purchase trees um, as part of, of that this year, so, so that's great. I'd like to invite you and the public to come and participate in, in celebrating Arbor Day um, on the 30th of, of April. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, yeah. if, if I could, I, I'm not sure, does the city have a tree farm where we're growing yes. trees? Okay. Yes. Yes, there are there various areas around the city where we where we grow trees, um, and of course there are all kinds of different trees throughout throughout the city, including fruit trees um, near uh, Guy Leader. Okay. So and and so we can take these trees when when we need to replace some somewhere else. Yeah, and that's part and we of have what the equipment. That that's exactly so, Commissioner. We'll talk about it. <laughs> we actually received a tree spade uh, through a grant several, several years ago. Great. And so we do have a tree spade that we can use to relocate trees. And we've even had trees donated, donated to us um, from various property owners where we go out and obviously uh, harvest the tree, I guess, and, and relocate it to our parks. And one, one of the things that uh, Mr. Hooper is going to be tasked with is actually working on a tree replacement plan. Um, as you all know, our trees, especially in Hillcrest, are old elm trees, and they have a, uh, have a lifespan that's associated with them. Um, and they're nearing the end of that lifespan. So we need to start being more proactive and forward thinking in how we're going to start replacing those. So um, that's one of the, the tasks that he's been assigned is to start working on a, a tree replacement plan to where every year we're planting X number of trees in order to replace the ones that we're potentially going to be losing in the future. Marvelous. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Any other questions? Okay. Cal no. Ongoing work at Colonial Park Golf Course. Justin Holwalt. I, I feel like I should turn it over to Claire. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so just, we have a couple of slides here and pictures just to update you on the improvements that we've been making out at, at Colonial. Um, obviously, one of the projects that we're working on is the uh, reconstruction of the uh, ponds that's located on the back nine as part of our reuse project. Um, there, this is, we started the dewatering process of the ponds. Um, so obviously we pumped the water out of, of one of the ponds into the other ponds, and we're obviously left with a lot of muck. And so this is kind of the start of the process and, and start of the project is starting to dewater the pond itself. Next slide, please. Uh, then once it started to dry out, we were able to get some excavation equipment in there, um, which you can just start scrolling through and you'll see that we're starting to make progress on those. Um, that photograph there was taken on Friday. The next photograph it was actually taken today. Um, I have to credit uh, Porter Kidd uh, for the drone footage um, that he provided actually to us today. The pond itself is uh, des designed to be about 15 feet de deep. Uh, currently, they're around seven feet deep um, in the center section of the pond. Uh, that you can see there. So uh, the excavation time period is scheduled for about 15 days to complete the uh, total excavation work, and then we'll start with the uh, liner of the pond coming in. The other major project that we're working on out at Colonial, of course, is the irrigation project. Um, this is just some photos of the irrigation piping. We're actually installing uh, HDPE pipe. Um, which is, it has a longer lifespan than PVC pipe itself and is obviously more durable. Uh, these are just some photos of obviously the piping itself, some of the uh, valves that are being installed as well as the lateral line. You'll see on the right side of the photo there that will extend out to where you'll actually place uh, the irrigation heads. That's an isolation valve that you see on the right hand side. So if they need to actually work on the, uh, that uh, lateral system and replacing heads, et cetera, that they may need to do to it, that valve we can shut off and only work on that one line and keep the rest of the system pressurized so we don't have to down the entire system uh, throughout the process. And that completes the update on the Colonial Park irrigation and storm uh, or pond improvements. Any questions that you may have on those? Any questions? Go ahead. I saw you guys moving that soil to that field. 
Yes. Um, off Will Height, is that is that city's land or somebody else's land, or what's going to happen with all that? That is actually uh, uh, between the contractor and the property owner. They made arrangements for the uh, soil to, that's excavated out to be located there. It's my understanding that they will then uh, spread that soil out across the property itself. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. And then we have the uh, the shooting range as well. I know it's not on the agenda, but I okay. thought I'd go ahead and provide the board an update with that one as well. Okay. And so obviously we're, we're making progress out at the shooting range. This photo is actually a shot looking uh, north uh, towards the start of the uh, clay, sporting clay course. That's the road coming in obviously has been graded, and that's the parking lot that will be associated with the sporting clay section. Next slide. And that's the trail system that will be going off for the sporting clay area. Next slide. That's another shot of it so you can see where it dips down. Uh, we have some really nice terrain out there in this area. So uh, once we're completed constructing it, it'll, uh, it, from a, I guess from a range standpoint, it'll be a really nice range. Um, this is the looped portion of where the sporting clays will start heading back towards uh, the parking lot again. And this is the... Um, main building itself. So this last week we actually finished the over excavation and bringing uh, the engineered field material back up for the pad of the main building. Um, so you can see some of the construction stakes that are out there. Uh, this, this week they will start on the footings of the building. Uh, they're starting to put down to the base course uh, for, the, for the roadway and the trail system themselves. Uh, they'll be working on the rough end for the uh, plumbing that's associated uh, with the building itself, um, as well as for the footings for the uh, walls that are associated with the trap and skeet uh, portion of the uh, shooting range itself. Next slide. And then there's some additional clearing and pictures of where the main building is going to, to be located as well. We're also going to be, and I think that wraps the pictures up. Yep. And so this is also in conversations that I've had with uh, Jessica Fisher with the New Mexico Department of Game and Fish. Um, we're going to start working on an RFP for the designing and equipment supply of the sporting clay its course itself. So as part of the grant and is excluded outside of the construction progress is to purchase all of the equipment for for the sporting clays and so the layout of the course hasn't been designed yet um, and so what we're going to do is is put that RFP out uh, basically establishing hey we need X number of um, I think it's 12 uh, sporting clay uh, units to be set in place uh, design this layout for us provide the equipment for us um, and then that'll be part of what's the next phases to come for the project itself. So, thank you, Justin. Yeah, what's the completion date on that? Um, about August time period to finish August. it up. Yeah, we had some delays in there uh, as we were working out some details with the contractor between engineers on the over excavation work, um, and so we were able to get to those um, um, addressed. And so you can see the pad was brought back up, but you'll really see work kick off um, starting actually this week uh, with the buildings themselves starting to go up. So. Okay, um, there was, like you. I said, there was a delay in there. However, um, there, since there wasn't anything scheduled for to be happening at the facility itself, it's not impacting uh, any events that were already pre-planned. Okay. Okay, Marty, you got any updates? <laughs> and I know that Mr. Tressel has been working hard with the Eastern New Mexico Range Management, working, getting their organization going. <laughs> Thanks, Justin. Commissioners, uh, thank you, and uh, staff. Uh, <clears throat> we've um, it's an ominous task when you uh, get down to the final wire. You know how that goes, and I know Justin uh, deals with that all the time. And um, you know uh, every sporting uh, event uh, that you put on, whether it's baseball, softball, soccer, whatever, re requires a number of volunteers and people. So. <clears throat> One of the things we're beginning to work towards uh, and uh, right now is two things we have to really develop. We have to develop some uh, volunteer staff. Uh, we have seven board members and uh, understand one of them's uh, not in good health right now, so we're probably down to six. Um, so we're really looking to start developing uh, a board of directors and some uh, volunteers that are going to be involved. We have to uh, get people uh, certified as uh, 
NRA basic range managers to be able to operate the range <coughs> per the contract with the city or the MOU. Uh, the second thing is, is uh, we have to raise funds to operate the, the program. And we've been working closely with Claire and Justin to uh, develop a sponsorship program that we are going to roll out in addition to memberships that we will be selling to the general public. Uh, you don't have to be a member to shoot. It, anyone can come out and shoot. The memberships just help support the operations. Um, we uh, haven't gone out actively doing that yet. And uh, uh, basically, we do want, don't want to get the cart before the horse uh, too fast because uh, that's happened in the past, and there's a lot of people that are sensitive to that in this community. So we're um, going to make sure that uh, the, w once we see the white of the building, so to speak, up, uh, sides going up, then we'll know that uh, we can take some pictures and start uh, uh, marketing the uh, sponsorship program that we have uh, been developing. Um, <clears throat> so those are the two things that we're really looking at is uh, building a, uh, uh, a strong uh, volunteer base and also uh, building the funds to be able to sustain Fortunately, uh, Jessica has done a good job in building the, uh, uh, the first load of targets. Uh, we just wrote a check at uh, Chaparral Ski Club in uh, Roswell for a truckload of targets for $17,000. So when you get it, and that lasts two ranges down there uh, about six to eight months. So you can understand that uh, it's not a, not a cheap thing to operate. And unfortunately, like everything else between shipping and cost of production of clay that hasn't gone down in the last uh, few months. The other thing that's a critical factor and, and uh, it seems like it's uh, going to be uh, uh, hopefully resolved but uh, at this point uh, just finding shotgun shells uh, is a uh, challenge. Uh, if you go to Walmart you'll notice their shelves are probably pretty empty. If you go to any of the gun, sh gun stores their shelves are pretty empty and they're having a hard time getting uh, shotgun shells particularly in the um, smaller um, BB size of nines uh, and uh, eights and eight and a half and seven and a half for the various uh, ranges. But, <clears throat> you know, those are all challenges that we're going to face as we get closer in time frame, but we've been working towards uh, developing and, and a number of the businesses locally are doing that to build a, uh, a uh, inventory in stock so that it'll have the ability to meet the demand we're hoping is there. Um, <clears throat> With that said, I just want to thank you again for all the support that the commissioners gave, gave and encouraging uh, Jessica to do the work she did. Uh, 3.5 million is not a small amount of dollars to throw out on uh, on some ground out in the middle of Nethawk area, um, but we believe it's going to be a beautiful facility. We believe it's going to be a, a facility that will attract people from uh, as far away as Amarillo. Uh, Las Cruces, Albuquerque, I've had people that shoot skeet, I've shot skeet with that are looking forward to coming to Clovis to uh, shoot. Um, I know um, those in the sporting clay, are, sporting clay uh, events, which I have not only shot a couple of times, uh, they're also um, looking forward to having a uh, uh, sporting clay range close at hand. So I think the um, opportunities for us to really put on a first class uh, operation are available to all of us and I encourage anyone that uh, is interested in uh, assisting or being part of it certainly uh, get in touch with me I'm glad to answer any questions and uh, uh, we feel like it's uh, it's going to be a real real huge asset to the uh, community of uh, Clovis and and Ned Houck Park I mean I think uh, that's a well uh, a huge facility that is getting more and more attention uh, and I think it's a, it's a great uh, it's a great gift to the community that NetHelp made. I guess that was a donation many years ago that uh, uh, we're going to take advantage of. So thank you all. Thank you, Marty. Any questions for Marty? Yeah, Mr. Chairman. Marty, thank you so much for your leadership. Uh, it's been uh, really uh, we appreciate it so much and. Uh, just, uh, it's been a lot of hard work on you guys, but you've persevered, and it's uh, you're going to get it done. I just thank you for that. Well, I, I appreciate that, and I'd be amiss if I didn't you know, recognize Bill Adams, who was the uh, Absolutely. Uh, driving force. He just came to me and said, hey, I'm, 
I want to step out and let you uh, run the front. <laughs> but uh, he has, uh, he's been right there by, by my side and uh, really working hard. And, you know, Claire and Justin and Kelsey have been very uh, helpful in uh, getting some of the things done. We're uh, getting our Facebook page up and running here. In fact, I was working on it before I came. Um, and, uh, you know, just uh, what seems like simple things, field boxes and, and those kind of things. Uh, fortunately, we've been able to uh, uh, get a few dollars together to... Uh, to uh, take care of those expenses, but uh, it's, a, it's an exciting project, and thank you for your acknowledgement, but I also know how much effort you have all put into it. Uh, didn't thank you. Without your uh, encouragement and support. So. Appreciate it. Thank you. And, thank you. And Mr. Chairman, you know, it, it, as Marty mentioned, you know, it, it, if it wasn't for their partnership, there's, I'm not in the sporting play business or trap and skeet, do I claim to know anything about it? And so through the process and through the design process and programming with Jessica, I mean, they provided great insight on things that we're going to need. I mean, for example, Marty mentioned that first truckload of sporting clays uh, costing $17,000. We've actually built those into the budget, and so our grant is actually going to allow us to purchase that first truckload of sporting clays. Uh, we also built into the grant things like a, a UTV uh, to be able to, to haul things around out there. So... Um, it's with their with their knowledge of what is needed out there that we were able to build those things uh, into into the program itself. So uh, it's been a great partnership. Remember, this isn't taxpayers' money either. That that well, from the Pittman Robertson side, it is coming from uh, certainly uh, through the the people that are in the sporting industry. Uh, when you purchases purchase dry, or uh, ammo. hunting license and ammo and things, and those taxes that you pay on those for those fees that you pay. Um, it goes to the Pittman-Robertson Act. Um, but then, of course, the city of Clovis is also uh, contributing <laughs> funds uh, to, to the project up to 400000 that that is using towards match for this pro program. So, Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Capital outlay funding. <laughs> you sure, Claire? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Mr. Hooper. <laughs> yes. Uh, Thank you. Um, we've I've got we've gotten re, uh, returns on three of these capital outlays. Uh, one is for the hundred thousand dollars for the lighting at Beecham Field that we're starting to look at. Um, another one is for two hundred fifty for the uh, resurfacing of parking lot improvements. That's the Fourteenth Street over on the north end of Hillcrest. And then the uh, last one was uh, seventy five thousand for Dennis Chavez and lighting. So started working with got with the purchasing people on that, and we're starting to find out. The process is it a design build do we have contractors that are already approved and things along those lines so we, we can start getting these rolling as quickly as possible okay that one uh the parking lot and the lights that was from last year's yeah and and mr chairman members of the parks board these are the agreements that we had just recently received from the 2020 legislative session in this legislative session the city of clovis received seventy five thousand dollars for playground equipment um, the, so that's the only funding for parks and recreation activities that we received in the in the session that just finished. Thank you, Claire. Thank, Thank you. you. Any other questions? I imagine them all will want those lights up as fast as possible. <laughs> yes, sir. I'll, I'll come and talk with you afterwards. Yes, sir. <laughs> and uh, Mr. Chairman, I've forwarded and Ms. Uh, Jamal, I've forwarded the information that you had provided me to Mr. Hooper when he started with the city, so he has that. So you um, and your contact information, so you can uh, Lisa? start to talk. Thank you. Uh, yes, thank you, Chairman. I just wanted to say that, and part of capital outlay projects, um. It's part of the beautification effort. Um, we were able to get installed downtown um, 15 of what will be our wind art that we put in downtown. Uh, 13 of them already went up and we've got two more coming up. So it's not necessarily relatable to a certain park, but it is part of our beautification efforts for downtown as well too. So in our community. Thank you, Lisa. I heard a lot of good comments about your windmills out there. Thank you, thank you. Any other questions? If not, Great American Cleanup, May the 8th, 2021, 500 Sycamore, Claire Burroughs. Yes, thank you, uh, Mr. <coughs> Chairman, members of the Parks Board. Um, we are going to schedule our, uh, our spring cleanup 
at 8 a.m. at 500 Sycamore on May the 8th, and I'd like to encourage the public to participate with that. We'll be sending out letters to our partners, um, the Chamber of Commerce, the IDC, Main Street, Cannon Air Force Base, and uh, the schools uh, to, uh, to participate um, in this. We um, historically get you know, great participation. We had some struggles in the fall, of course, but because of COVID uh, safe practices, but um, we are hoping that we can um, get everybody to come and help clean up our town. I'd like to encourage all of those of you that are on the parks board to come and and uh, join in the in the fun to do that um, for the commission meeting this Thursday, we have the request for approval to um, apply for and accept the 2021-2022 New Mexico Clean and Beautiful grant. We received eleven thousand four hundred and seventy dollars last year, which we use for uh, beautification projects throughout the year. So we are, we'll probably be applying for about twenty thousand dollars or so in this um, in this next round to uh, to help move the program forward. Thank you. Thank you, Claire. Any questions? I'd like to invite all the commissioners to be out there. <laughs> Maybe even the city manager. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, I know Vicky's out there all the time, so I don't have to say anything about Vicky and Claire. They're always out there. The mayor was out there too last year. The first year he was mayor, so he was out there. So we need some other commissioners to be out there too. And, and for the record, oh, I've been, for the record, I've out, been there. out there. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on what's going on with the kids' schedules. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, if I may, it, it's true. I, I did help. It was especially cold that day. If the temperature could be warmer this time, that would be helpful. And uh, you'll work on that. Thank you. And uh, as far as, you know, asking or requiring all of the commissioners to do that, I'll, I'll leave it up to you to, to inform them of that. <laughs> Clovis okay. Main Street always has a team, and we did it in the cold, too. I think us and the Morrises were, were probably the, the, the majority out there that day. It was cold last time. It's always a good time, though. It's, it, you can make a lot of fun out of it. So yeah. we appreciate everything that the city puts into it because they do have donuts and pizza and stuff, and, and that's, always, that's always welcoming for all the volunteers. So. Yeah. And thank you, everybody. Uh, any other questions for where? talking about the cleanup or not virtual town hall for new mexico statewide comprehensive outdoor recreation plan Kerberos. yes uh, thank you mr chairman members of the parks board um on the 25th of this month uh, commissioner madrid and uh, mr hooper and myself attended the evening session of the statewide comprehensive outdoor recreation plan a presentation. There were about 148 people that attended that throughout the state. Um, Celine, could you put the survey up online, please? Um, so, SCORP um, is each state is required to develop a, a SCORP at least every five years per the Land Water Conservation Fund Act of 1965, and it's to justify state and federal expenditures for outdoor recreation acquisition and development projects. It's uh, intended to be the state strategic plan for outdoor recreation um, and is intended to address all administrative types of outdoor recreation resources, including federal, state, local, tribal, and, and private resources. And so um, they are completing a survey that I would like to encourage the public, yourselves, and, and everyone in the community to get involved with. The survey is located on the website, which um, is, is called www.getoutsidenm.org. Um, and there's information there with regard to the, to the survey on the screen too. I gave you all a copy of that flyer as well. If you would share that, disseminate it around. I've emailed it to all our partners, including um, the schools and um, Canon and um, the you know the community college and so on as well, and all the city employees and Main Street. So if you could share that within the community, so we can make sure that our voices are heard um, and our needs of the of our of our area um, as the state completes this work. Um, if you have um, 
would like some more information about it, please feel free to uh, give me a call. I'd be happy to, to discuss it with you. But that's that's it in a, in a nutshell, yeah. And it's, it'll be on the city's um, website and on our other um, media platforms as well. But could anybody want to add anything, Commissioner or Mr. Hooper? Thank you, Claire. You know, there are a lot of places out here in New Mexico that are are nice to get out and go travel and look around. There's a lot of walking trails, a lot of historical sites around New Mexico. A lot of people don't realize that there's so many historical sites around New Mexico. So it's a good it's a good deal on this get outside New Mexico. And what they want to do is get people to go exercise and and be healthier. So any questions? Nope. No, no questions. Nope. Okay. Next meeting, date and time. So uh, I'm. you're asking for the next meeting to be, Mr. Chairman, members of the Parks Board at Ned Haug. So that would be the 26th of April. Um, shall we meet there at 5.30? By 30, the 26th of April? Mm -hmm. At uh, Ned Hook Park, at the, at the Pappy Museum. And maybe while we're out there too, after we've looked at the Pappy Museum, maybe we could go to the shooting range and have a look at that area too, if you would like. Okay. That would be Good. great. You want everybody to take their own cars out there or are you going to provide a bus or? Um, due to the COVID safe practices, I think if people could take their own vehicles, that would be great. If anybody needs help with transportation, if they could let me know, please. Okay. Okay, any questions? Anything else anybody wants to bring up? Did you want to say anything? Did you want to? Me? Yeah. Uh, sure. Um, I've been talking to Ms. Claire uh, as of recently regarding pickleball courts. I know that, uh, I don't know if you guys know what pickleball is. It's like tennis, smaller court, but it's it's exploding throughout the country. It's very popular. While tennis popularity is going down, uh, pickleball is 150% growth every year. Uh, states like Utah, um, Arizona, Florida are replacing older tennis courts for pickleball courts. Um, and I know that we have some courts, like Green Acres has a tennis court that is um, no longer, I don't think, and it just like has some basketball hoops on it. People skateboard there. Um, and I have proposed or would like to get some ideas of how we can get some courts out here. I, I just wonder if we could resurface Green Acres and put two courts there. Um, there's a big following here in Clovis of pickleballers, and I know that there'd be more if there was actual permanent courts we could play on with actual surface, because the one that um, at the rec center is like a slick concrete, it's not the ideal surface. Uh, pickleball is played on a surface similar to uh, tennis. So um, I'd just like to see that come to fruition. I know there's fun, there's in the, the city plan of 2015, there was plans for pickleball courts and uh, an answer I received, was, there wasn't funds for that. Uh, but I would like to see that come to fruition before I leave Can uh, Cannon and Clovis because uh, it's a big part of my life and I like to play it. And I know other Clovis members do. Thank you. Too bad Tom wasn't here. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Mr. Chairman, and, and thanks so much for uh, it coming this evening and, and actually reaching out to us. And, and since we've had conversations, we, we have started to, in talking to uh, Mr. Hooper on what would it cost us to resurface yeah. those courts. Tom has been fighting for those pickle courts for a long time. Right. And so <laughs> we, have, we actually have courts there at Green Acres. We have courts at Hillcrest Park. They're all tennis courts. Um, at Pat Sandoval um, is the court that he's speaking of that currently is, has some striping on it for um, um, pickleball as well as we, we fix the lighting. And so now they can play late into the evening hours if they so choose. Um, and so uh, we're going to do some research and figure out what it would cost to, to resurface those courts. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? If not, anything else anybody wants to bring up? And not we stand adjourned. <laughs>